Um, I made a really silly little thing if anyone wants to, to follow along or ask me questions without actually standing up and asking questions and projecting. Um, it'll be easier if you use uh, that little website there. So this is about organizing my development with Tmux. Why is that so small? All right. Yeah, that'll work. Maybe. All right, so uh, since showing is going to be a lot easier than telling you, uh, I'm just gonna show you right away what Tmux does. Uh, but first, uh, has anybody here used GNU Screen? All right, so a lot of people here kind of uh, um, will probably find this a little bit familiar. Um, uh, a lot of other people probably use tabbed terminals now. Uh, even, even Windows has finally gotten really good terminal uh, uh, terminals. Uh, not like back in the day with the uh, command.exe and notepad, uh, how, I learned, how I learned to write Perl. Um, so I can't really go over installing Tmux, uh, though I will say that it's available in every package manager I've ever used, including OpenBSD and FreeBSD. Um, I've used it in SigWin. Um, there's the Windows subsystem, or sorry, Linux subsystem for Windows, um, which I've heard works. Um, it's the, the, the Ubuntu in Windows thing. Um, and now with, with all that Docker and Windows stuff, you can probably get a good one that way too. But um, suffice it to say that if you want to try out Tmux, uh, it'll be available for your platform. Um, so to start out with Tmux, um, since it's a command line program, we just uh, need to run the Tmux command. So uh, once we run this command here, um, okay, well we're back uh, at a shell prompt again, but now we got this little, this little blue, or uh, sorry, green bar down at the bottom here. Um, and we got this, uh, over in the bottom left here, we've got uh, what's called the session name, uh, which defaults to zero, and we'll talk about uh, what sessions are and how to use them later. Um, but next to that we have uh, window information. Um, so I have one window here, window zero. Um, it's currently running, uh, it's currently running Z shell, uh, which is the shell that I use. Uh, and this uh, little asterisk here says that this is my current window. Um, so like most you know, command line programs, we're packing a lot of information into a very, very limited amount of space. Um, and creating and managing windows uh, is one of the most useful parts of Tmux, so I'm going to be spending a lot of time uh, talking about this. Uh, but finally, over here on the right, we've got some information that I don't really care about. I got the, the host name of my laptop, um, and you can see the time the screenshot was taken at uh, um, yesterday night at four o'clock. So, uh, burning the midnight oil, apparently. Um, otherwise, this is just what we had before we ran Tmux. So I can type a command in here, I uh, get some output on my screen. It's pretty amazing. Uh, and then when, <laughs> yeah. <Use Tmux. laughs> yep. And then when we're done, we can exit our shell, and we've exited Tmux. So yep, that's all I got to say. Um, have a good night. Oh no no okay okay okay. So uh, how about instead of exiting, uh, we can actually do a thing called detaching. Um, so we can detach from our re uh, Tmux session, and then later we can reattach to it. Uh, when we detach from a session, everything that we had in our session keeps running. So uh, Tmux stays running in the background, anything in our session keeps running, uh, waiting for us to get back to it. Uh, so let's start uh, Tmux back up again. Uh, but this time, let's detach instead of exiting. Uh, and we do this by typing Control B and then hitting the D key. So Control B is called the prefix. Uh, so when we type this, we're telling Tmux that, hey, we're about to tell you to do something. Uh, and then D, of course, stands for detach. Um, so if you're a screen user, you might remember that control A is a prefix. Um, and later, I'll show you how to configure uh, whatever prefix you want. Uh, personally, I find control B to be a finger workout, uh, so I changed mine to control S. But, um, so when we detach, after we did control B and then D, uh, we're back to our terminal session. Uh, and you notice that Tmux tells us that uh, we're detached and what session we detached from. 
Um, but in the background, our tmux is still running. So later, if we want to attach back to our session, uh, we can run tmux, tmux attach session, or for brevity, tmux attach, or for even more brevity, tmux a. Um, and when we do that, we're back, right back to where we started. Uh, so why is this useful? Um, the most common use case you'll find for this is SSH connections. Uh, you'll connect to your remote machine, uh, you'll start a TMUX session, and then everything that you do in that TMUX session is on that server. Uh, and later, if you get disconnected or if you, you know, quit work for the day, uh, when you come back tomorrow morning, your TMUX session is there, how you left it, and you can get back right where you were. Uh, so for a lot of people, this is indeed the only reason they use TMUX. They just create one window, one session, and then they just have that kind of uh, insurance that if their uh, internet gets unplugged, they still have uh, the, the code that they were working on. Um, but this is actually also good for detaching uh, uh, tasks, uh, running them in the background. Um, so if I run you know, a daemon, or if I'm running a long-running task, um, I could run it using nohup, I could run it using disown, uh, but tmux makes this a little bit easier to get back to where I was. So if that long-running task is spitting out tens of thousands of line of output, uh, I can at any time reattach to my session and then see, oh, hey, this is, this is where my, pro my process is, and this is about how far I think it has to go. Um, it's not impossible to do these things with nohup and disown. It's just more difficult and quite annoying. And in fact, so annoying I've never even tried it. Um, so. Now that we've reattached, uh, we're back in Tmux, we can try some other features. Um, so the name Tmux st stands for Terminal Multiplexer, um, making one terminal act like multiple terminals. Uh, and so the first way we can do that is with Windows. Um, so here we are, back in Tmux. And remember, we already have the one window open, um, Windows 0. So let's open a program. Uh, I use Vim for my editor, so uh, let's run Vim. Uh, okay, so now this window is busy running Vim. Uh, in order for me to want to do something else, I'm gonna have to open up a new window. And I can open up a new window using Control B, C. Um, Control B again is the prefix, and C is for create window. Uh, so when I do that, I have a new window with a new shell. You can see down here, um, my new window is window number one. It's running Z shell, my, uh, my shell, and is our current window. Uh, but you can also see that the old window over here has a little dash next to it that says that this is our last window, our previous window, the last window we were at. Um, again, a lot of information being packed into a very, very tiny space here. Probably not a, that important, but uh, well, um, we'll get to why that's mildly interesting. Um, so how... Now that I have this Z, uh, new Z shell window, how do I get to my old window? Um, so there's multiple ways in, uh, in true Tim Toady fast -heard. Tim Tony, yeah. Um, since it was the previous window, I can use Control B and L for last window. Um, I can use Control B and P since it's the previous window numerically. So one will go to zero, two would go to, to, to one. Uh, or I can actually choose my windows by number using Control B zero. So to go to Windows 0 directly, I can uh, just choose it. Uh, the last one is a, a little more difficult because the zero key is way over to the other side of my keyboard, but we'll go over how to fix that also a little bit later here. Uh, so doing any one of those will bring me back to Vim. Uh, and then to get back to the new window, uh, I could do Control B L again because that was my last window. Um, I can go to the next window numerically uh, or I can go directly to window one. Uh, so I can easily move back and forth between our windows. Uh, and now that I'm back in my new window, I can run a command, maybe look up Tmux's documentation, which is a really good thorough document. I'm always impressed by this. Um, and then when I'm done looking at that, I can exit the shell, and we're back to our last window, and the window that we had created is now destroyed. Uh, so the next thing that uh, a new Tmux user is going to come across um, is that once you've entered Tmux, your terminal doesn't really work quite like it used to. Uh, specifically, the scroll bar doesn't quite work how it used to. 
Um, so if I run a command with a lot of output, and then if I try to use my mouse, usually, to, uh, uh, to scroll back up on my terminal window, um, so I can see that I'm scrolling through the terminal here, but not the output. Um, and sometimes I won't actually even scroll at all. Um, now this is mainly because the mouse isn't enabled in Tmux, uh, and I'll go over, you can enable that if you want. Um, I don't, but um, if we, I want to actually look at all of this output, um, Tmux is friendly and helpfully putting this output in a buffer for me. Um, and this is good because it means that we can come back to this later. Um, but it does mean that we need to tell Tmux that we want to look at it. Um, and we do that by entering what is called copy mode. And we enter copy mode by hitting control B and then the, that's a left brace, left, left square bracket, left square bracket, there we go. <sighs> Uh, so in copy mode, here we have two changes. Um, down here, the, uh, um, the name of our window is encased in brackets to show that we're in Tmux's copy mode. And then up here, there's uh, two numbers. Uh, the first one shows what line we're on right now. Uh, zero is the bottom of the screen. And then the second shows the number of lines that we have in the buffer. Uh, so we, I have about 200 lines uh, up worth to go. Uh, so I can move through this buffer uh, using left, up, right, and down. Uh, I can use page up, page down. Um, uh, Tmux also comes uh, set up with less style bindings, so I can use HJKL, uh, Control F uh, to go up, Control B to go down, uh, and then lowercase g to go to the top, uh, uh, uppercase g to go to the bottom. Uh, you can actually also configure other styles, Vim, Emacs, whatever you'd like. Uh, so I hit the G key, I scroll all the way to the up, all, all the way to the top, and I can hit capital G and scroll all the way to the bottom. Um, but I can also move through the buffer by searching for keywords. Uh, again, much like less Vim, Emacs, all that. Uh, I can use the question mark to search up, and I can use the slash to search down. So if I hit the question mark, you can see that Tmux shows us uh, that we're searching up. And then all I have to do is type in what I want to look for. And when I press enter, Tmux shows me the search results. Um, it highlights all the matches that I have. And then it puts the cursor on the bottom one, since we were searching up. And then if I want, uh, oh, right, and it tells us how many results we found. This actually was pretty recently added, and I like this a lot. Um, so. Then I can move through my next uh, my results by pressing uh, either lowercase n to go to the next or uppercase n to go to the previous. Um, I don't know why it's not p, but meh. Uh, so pressing n goes to the next result here. Takes me up a little bit, bit on the page. Um, and then if I want to exit copy mode, I can hit q uh, to quit. And then I'm back at my command prompt. Uh, will the buffer continue to grow? Uh, so the buffer will continue to grow up to uh, the amount you've set it to. Um, I generally configure it to be about 10,000 lines. Uh, and unfortunately for me, with the, the job I have, that's actually not enough. But I don't want to go too far because you know memory is a thing that is necessary for that. So yeah, you can configure that to be basically as tall as you want it to be. Uh, so finally, the last thing about copy mode is, is it's called copy mode because we can copy text from the buffer uh, and then paste it in later. Um, so I can start uh, selecting text by pressing the space bar, and I can then just move through the text to select it. So if I just move down a couple of lines, uh, I'll select all this text. And then I can either press Control W or I can press the Enter key to copy the text uh, into the, the paste bin or the paste board or Clipboard, clipboard, that's a word. Um, and then I can go back to my editor window if I want. Uh, and if I hit Control-B and then the right square bracket, it'll paste the text. Um, so some of that is a little bit awkward. Uh, I will admit I don't use that very often. Um, most of the time I just select the text with my mouse and then copy and paste it how I want. Um, but when the text is too big for a single screen of my terminal, I end up having to go to copy mode, pasting all, you know, copying all the text that I want and then moving it to where I need it to be. 
Uh, okay, so Tmux can create then multiple windows, um, but what if I want to be able to look at uh, both my editor and my output side by side? Uh, so for this, Tmux actually allows splitting windows into panes. Um, so to split the window vertically, I use Control B and then the percent sign. And now our window is split in two. You can see I got Vim still on the one side uh, and a new shell on the other side. Uh, and then I can split horizontally using Control B and then the double quotes. Uh, I have no idea why these were chosen, uh, though the percent sign at least looks like a vertical split. Um, so now I split my right pane into two horizontally and I can keep going and going on into uselessness. Uh, each pane has its own shell, its own scroll buffer, and uh, when we're done with the pane, we can exit the shell and the space gets reclaimed. Uh, so now we're back here to, we got an editor on one side, uh, the shell on the other. Uh, to switch between these panes, uh, we can use Control B and then the left arrow. Uh, so Control B and the arrow keys will actually move us between the panes on the window. Uh, so Control B left, and now I'm back in my editor. Um, and then if we split this pane, but we need to see it full screen for, uh, for some reason, uh, if we hit Control B and Z for zoom, we can actually see the pane full screen. Uh, so I end up, uh, this one took me unfortunately a long time to, 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 to learn, and now I use it basically every single day. Especially when copy and pasting code to ask my you know, coworkers, hey, what am I doing wrong here? Um, so when you're in zoom mode, you can again notice that uh, down here we're showing that we're zoomed. Um, so if you uh, forget, well, there's an indication here, but also if you forget and you try to move panes, or if you try to, to split a pane, it will de-zoom first and then split your pane. So that's a little painful. So um, yeah, I'll be here all week. Um, those are the basics. Um, starting and stopping Tmux, uh, attaching and detaching from sessions, uh, creating, destroying, switching windows, uh, creating, destro or, sorry, using the scroll buffer uh, and copy mode, and then creating, destroying, and switching panes. Um, so with only these things, uh, Tmux is a very useful tool. I, uh, I got around with using this, um, all, only these features for the longest time. Um, but after a while, uh, you know, I, I felt like trying to customize this, uh, and with my new job here, I work at Grant Street Group now, um, I work on like five or six tickets in a day, very small tickets, and I, all, I, I generally have to like switch between tasks, I have to go back to old tasks to fix minor bugs in my code, and it became a lot of context switching. Um, so the rest of this is about how to maximize your efficiency um, with Tmux. Um, and of course, the first thing we have to do is customize it um, for our needs. Uh, Tmux is highly configurable, like all good software. Um, I don't believe it can send email yet, but I think they're working on it. Um, so I'm only going to be able to go over the most useful things, uh, especially for anyone who's just starting out. Um, these are, of course, just examples. Um, this is what I do. If you have, uh, uh, if this isn't your need, you know, go ahead and try something else. Um, so the tmux configuration file is .tmux.conf in your home directory. Uh, so if you've never configured tmux before, you're gonna have to create this. Uh, so I'll open up this file in my editor here. Uh, and then the first thing I do in tmux is I change the prefix. Um, like I said, control B uh, default is kind of a finger workout for me. Um, I could actually use the keyboard correctly and maybe then it'd be using both hands, but I don't do that, so. Um, Screen users will end up switching this to Control A, and I don't like to do that because uh, it's actually useful for Control A. Um, by default, it's bound in most shells to move to the start of the line. Um, so whenever I'm in screen, I try to use Control A to move to the start of the line, and then it doesn't do anything, and I'm wondering what the heck. Um, so instead, I decided to start using Control S. Um, the S key is on the home row under my fingers, and I never ever use uh, control S for its initial purpose of SIG stop. Um, I've never actually had a reason to use SIG stop, um, but eh, probably before my time. 
Um, so, yeah. Oh, yeah. Quick question? No. No, sorry. Uh, I mean, I, I will use Control Z putting in the background. That, that works. And that also stops it. So, hey. Um, so, uh, to change the prefix, uh, I'm going to use the set command. Um, I have to give it the G option to make it a global setting. So, this will set the prefix for basically all the sessions, all the windows, all the things that I create. Um, and I'm going to set the prefix config to control S. Uh, the capital C here is control. Uh, after we change the prefix, um, we're going to have to do two more things here quick. Uh, first, the default behavior for pressing control B twice is to send control B to the currently running program in the, in the terminal. Um, so I don't need to do that because control B isn't the prefix anymore. So I can unbind the existing uh, functionality of control B. Um, and then finally, I need a way to send control S to the current program just in case. Like, I, I, mean, I don't know why I would use sig stop, but there might be a reason eventually in the future. Um, in fact, most of the time I do it now is accidentally, um, which is always fun. Um, so what I'll do is I'll bind control S to send the prefix. Uh, so what this means then is that if I, ha if I, send the pre if I hit the prefix, and then hit Control S, I will send the prefix to the currently running program. Uh, so now my prefix is Control S. Uh, control B is just Control B, whatever Control B does. Um, and if I press Control S twice, it'll send Control S once to the program. Um, now, to, for maximum confusion, I'm going to keep con calling the prefix Control B throughout the rest of this talk. Uh, because that's what it's going to be when you start out. Um, so that, that'll either limit the confusion or increase it, um, whichever. Um, so next thing I want to do is I want to renumber my windows. Um, having the window start at zero is annoying. Um, our window, or sorry, all our keyboards start numbering at one. Uh, so one's on the left, zero's on the right. So if I'm using the number keys to switch between windows, if I want the first window, I have to go all the way to the right side of the keyboard, which doesn't make any sense to me. So uh, what I like to do then is to fix this quick, I set the base index to one. And then when I add that to my uh, configuration file, uh, and then I'll have to restart it eventually uh, to get renumbering it. Um, and the next thing I have to configure as a Vim user is I have to uh, configure the escape time. Uh, the default behavior of Tmux is to wait one second after hitting the escape key before uh, um, whatever escape sequence you're about to type is sent to the next program. Um, and this is because uh, escape, the escape key is, is the first uh, character in an uh, NC escape sequence. Um, it's a way to send special commands to terminals. Um, extremely special commands, like pressing the left arrow to move the cursor left, uh, pressing the right arrow to move it right, and uh, trying to make bold text. These are all escape sequences. And since we use the arrow key to change panes, Tmux has to wait for that escape sequence to be fully complete before it can decide whether or not to send it on to the program. Um, so normally this takes almost no time. Um, however, if you're on a network or if you're on a cellular device, this might take longer and longer. Uh, so uh, as a Vim user, though, I need escape to get me out of insert mode, and I need it fast. So what I found is that I will type the code that I'm typing. I'll hit the escape key, and then immediately start trying to go up and down in my file and start typing H, J, K, and L in my, in my editor. Um, so ruining whatever I'm trying to do. Um, so I can configure Tmux then to spend less time waiting for these things uh, and just hope that I'm never on a TCP connection with a latency of, you know, a second. Um, so if I set the escape time to uh, 20 milliseconds maybe, uh, sounds about right. We'll never, we'll never have more than a 40, second ping, or 40 millisecond ping, right? Um, so with that out of the way, uh, I can ask, uh, let's make it a little easier to move panes. Uh, I'm a Vim user, so in my head, I've mapped all of the arrows to H, J, K, and L. 
Um, it's actually kind of freaky how often I move to HJK and L when I'm trying to, to, for example, play a video game and move around. It's, it's really weird how that's now ingrained in my head. Um, so if I want to, I can bind the H key to select the pane to the left. And then if I do Control B and H, it'll go to the left. Uh, and then I can do the same thing for J uh, to go down, K to go up, and L to go to the right. But we're not limited to just using the prefix here. Um, I can also bind keys if I want so that if I press them at any time, they will do a thing. Uh, so I can make it so that, for example, uh, holding the Alt key will, uh, uh, and then hitting a, an arrow key will move me through panes. Uh, so I can take all of these binds that I made, and if I add the M for meta, um, no keyboards have a meta anymore, so it's called Alt. Um, and then if I pass the N option to say no prefix, now if I hit Alt H at any time, it'll bring me to the left. Uh, so once I've done all the configuration I'm going to do, I can reload my config. Uh, I could just restart Tmux, but I'm lazy. Um, so I'm going to reload my config in my current session. Um, we can load the config using uh, Tmux's source command, much like bash source or, or shell source. Um, and there's not really a key binding to do it, so we can do that using Tmux's command line. Uh, to sort of show the command line, I can do control B and then colon. And then the status bar down here changed to the command bar. Uh, so this command bar down here at the bottom lets me execute tmux commands. Uh, indeed, everything in this config file so far has been a tmux command. If I wanted to, I could run all that stuff down here on the command line. Uh, and we'll actually get to more fun with that later. Uh, so to load the command line, remember we use the uh, source command, and then we give it the file that we want to source. So this is our home directories.tmux.conf file. Um, so when I put that in, it reads the file, and now you can see that uh, my numbers uh, on the windows have changed. Uh, so of course, I can't be maximally productive unless I can control how everything looks. Um, so Tmux lets us change the color and position of anything down here in the status bar. Um, for example, this like blue on, is it green on blue, blue on green text down here. Like I'm having really trouble seeing that. Uh, I, use, I use Solarized for all my terminals and this is not a good uh, color scheme for Solarized. Um, and this, this right side over here takes up a lot of room. Um, I don't really need to know what day it is. I may, I may forget what time it is, but that's what I have a phone for. Um, so let's configure a couple other things. Um, first, I can set the status background um, to be black, and then I can set the status foreground uh, to be white. So I'll have black background, white foreground. Uh, and then next, I can configure the amount of space that the left side, uh, which is the session name, and the right side, which is all that other stuff, uh, are allowed to take up. Uh, so I can set the status left length to uh, about 20. Um, this, this is what I have. Uh, you can obviously set your own, uh, but we'll get into why you need some space over there a little bit later. Um, and I don't want the right side to take up as much space as it's taking up, so I'm also going to set that to 20. Uh, and once I get all this configured, I can again reload my config file. And now we can see that everything looks prettier. Um, and over here, only the host name and the current time are being shown. So it'll actually, Tmux will adjust how much it shows over there based on how much space it has to show things. Uh, and this isn't actually that much, or isn't actually like the limit of what Tmux can do. There's people who put battery monitors, load monitors, um, they, they, they really go, can go overboard in the, the little area over there if, uh, if bells and whistles and uh, gauges and dials are what you like. Um, so one more, uh, there's a lot more configuration to do, um, but not much I can go over. Uh, however, I will say that if you like using a mouse in your terminals, um, you can set mouse mode on. 
And then uh, once you're in mouse mode, the, the scroll wheel will work. Um, you'll, you'll go into copy mode when you try to select things. Uh, and very much works uh, um, much like uh, mouse works in Vim or Emacs. Um, I personally don't use it. I prefer my terminal to be a dumb text displaying thing, but I know a lot of people who like this. Uh, so remember that detaching and attaching sessions are one of Tmux's core features, but what if I don't want to reattach to the session that I already have running? Um, so if I just run Tmux again without trying to attach to my, uh, uh, to my session, I get a new session. You can see down here, uh, our session is now named one because I have a session zero already and this is session one here. So now I have a new Tmux session completely unrelated to any other Tmux session I have running. Uh, I can open up new windows, I can split them into panes, I can start programs just like any other Tmux session. Uh, and then when we detach, uh, Tmux tells us that we detached from session one. Uh, so let's try attaching again. So if I run Tmux attach, I get the last session that I attached to. That's pretty handy. Uh, but how do I get to the first session, session zero? Um, so if I use tmux attach with the dash t option, I can specify what session I want to attach to. Uh, in this case, I want to attach to session zero. Uh, okay, well, uh, so tmux doesn't like being run inside tmux. Um, so I forgot to detach first. All right. Um, so I detach, and then I run tmux attach uh, dash t zero, and now I'm back to where I was before, editing my config file. Um, so if I want to know what tmux sessions exists or even whether or not tmux is running, I can run tmux ls. Um, and that'll list all the running sessions, uh, their names, and a uh, couple bits of information about them. Um, if there's no tmux session, it'll tell you no server running. Uh, but in order for us to really use multiple sessions properly, uh, we're going to have to have something a little more descriptive than this zero and one. Um, we can instead give our sessions descriptive names, uh, the project we're working on or the JIRA ticket we're working on. Um, we can rename any session we have uh, by using the rename session command. Um, I can either use the tmux prompt, uh, control B colon to run uh, rename session, or this is actually bound to control B dollar sign. Um, I didn't know that and I never remember that, so I usually end up using the, the command prompt. Um, so I just need to type control B colon and then rename session and then the session's name. So I'm going to call this one my talk. This is, this is where I'm going to do my talk. Uh, and then when we run that command, our session's renamed. Uh, you can see down here that now my session name is taking up a little more space down on the left. Um, so that's why we got uh, set, our, set it to 20 earlier. Uh, it now also shows up in tmux ls. So it's not session one in LS anymore, it's now session talk. And also you can see uh, Tmux LS will tell us whether or not a session is attached. So if someone else is attached to the session or some other terminal perhaps, um, you can see that right in the, right in the LS output. Uh, so if I want to, I can create a new session with a name right away um, by using Tmux new session um, or just Tmux new. Um, the dash S option then allows me to specify a name when I create the session. So now I have a session, uh, second session named BugFix. Uh, so I use these a lot. Um, like I said, my current job has me bouncing around between four or five tickets a day. Um, each ticket touches different files, uh, different tests, uh, and no matter what, two days later, someone's gonna come and say, hey, you didn't quite do that right. So can you just make this one little tweak on this line? Uh, and it's really helpful to be able to have my editor already open to that window in that repository and just, okay, yeah, switch to the session, make the, the tweak, run the tests, and we're done. Um, so for each ticket then I work on, uh, I actually create a new session named after the JIRA ticket that, uh, um, um, that the work's being done under. Uh, then I can attach to whatever session I wanna work on, uh, do a bunch of work. When I get interrupted to work on something else, I can go back to that session uh, and so on and so forth. Um, so this really helps reduce the inertia of context switching for me. Um, I was actually really struggling when I started at Grant Street of being able to switch between four or five tickets a day. 
uh, and I, I, I kind of worked out how to do this. I now have a bunch of shell scripts that actually like set up these sessions, set up repositories. Uh, I use Git work trees so that I have different areas for every ticket that I'm working on, and it's 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 really been helping. Um, in addition then to naming sessions, I can also name these windows. Um, like I may have mentioned before, actually I don't think I mentioned before, uh, windows are named generally with the program that's running. Um, so you may have noticed down here that since this window is running Vim, it says it's running Vim. And then since this window is running Z shell, it's running, it says it's running Z shell. Uh, and this is a pretty useful default, um, but let's create a new window. Okay, now I have two two windows named Z shell, and which one's which? Uh, I don't know which one I have my tests in, I don't know which one that I was looking up documentation or logs in. Um, so instead I can just rename the windows using control B and then comma. Uh, or of course the, the rename window command. Uh, this one I use so often I actually do know the shortcut. Um, so when I do control B comma, I get this command line down here, and then in the prompt I have to back out the name that's there, and replace it with the name that I want. Uh, so this is my this is going to be my editor window. Um, once I've done this, this will stay the name uh, even if I run a different program in it. So this disables all the automatic renaming uh, of Windows. Uh, so now I can easily remember which one has my editor, uh, which one I'm running my tests in, and which one I've been looking up documentation. Uh, eventually, uh, longer, longer than it should have taken, I realized that I was doing the same thing over and over and over and over again. Um, and when this happens, I like to take a step back and say, okay, what, what, what can I automate? What can I do so that I don't have to do this boring stuff over and over and over again? Um, so in this case, I was creating the same team up sessions over and over and over again. Uh, whenever I write, write a blog post, I would create one with my editor and my uh, blog site generator uh, on one side. Um, when I was working on the CPAN testers back end, I'd have to have one window for my code and one window for my tests so that I could always like go back and forth between the, uh, um, the test results and my editor. Uh, and when I'm working on uh, my Yancy content management system, I need uh, a window for editing, uh, I need a window for testing, and I need a third window that runs all of the databases that Yancy supports. Um, I support uh, Postgres, MySQL, and so I have to run a version of those so that I can run my tests against them. Um, the tests also uh, require a bunch of environment variables that I need to set up. And if I had to do that every single time, I would go nuts. Uh, even if I had to do it once a week, I would go nuts. Uh, worse, in that last example there where I got to set up the environment and everything, I'm going to forget. And if I forget, I'm not running all my tests. If I'm not running all my tests, I'm going to release code that doesn't work, and then something's going to explode and everyone's going to die. And I will have killed you. So, to prevent this, I can automate the setup of my TMUX sessions. Um, so, and I can do that using TMUX commands. Uh, remember, uh, we were using TMUX commands to rename sessions in the command prompt. Um, we were using tmux command to configure tmux in the, the configuration file. Um, tmux also has commands to create windows, to create panes, to move between panes, uh, and even to like run programs in those, those windows and those panes. Uh, so I can run, but also I can run these tmux commands from anywhere. I don't have to be inside tmux to run these commands. Um, so indeed, I can run a bunch of commands to set up a session before I attach to it. Um, so if I create a session, let's name it Yancy for the, the CMS that I work on, and then if I pass the dash D, it immediately detaches. So if I do that, nothing happens. But if I go back and look at, at the LS, you can see that my session did get created. So now I can run other commands to modify this session. Uh, and since I'll be doing this a lot, I, I wrote a shell script to do it for me. Um, so here I create a new session and detach from it. And then first, uh, the next thing I do is create a new window. So this is going to be my second window. Uh, and then I'm gonna split that window up into two panes vertically. Uh, so one over the other. 
Um, the first window is my editor, so I'm going to send it the vim command and press enter. And then the second window, I'm going to run the actual CMS in it. Um, this is the second window in the first pane, 2.0. Um, the bottom pane, 2.1, I'm going to add those environment variables I was mentioning before. Uh, and then I'm going to create a, a new window, the third window, and run Postgres. And then I'm going to split that window and run MySQL. That's Postgres above MySQL. And then if I wrap this whole thing in a conditional, I can see if the session does not yet exist, create it. But if it does exist, all you do is you go down to the bottom and you attach to it. So I've been doing this. Um, I actually added this to the Yancy repository. It's been so useful. Um, there's, uh, besides these shell scripts, there are other ways of doing this. Um, I've been using something called tmuxifier, um, but there's also something called tmosil. Um, but since I learned how to do it using shell scripts, now mostly I just use it doing shell scripts. Um, tmuxifier and tmosil were both kind of, I guess, before it was as easy as it was to do it using shell. But, um, but also these, uh, these two things will actually help you organize and manage your sessions uh, if you don't want to do that yourself using shell scripts. Uh, so that's how I've been using Tmux to organize all my development and kind of help me with switching between all the various tasks I work on in a given day. Do we have any questions? Yes. Yeah, so uh, the question is, do I, do I SSH into the remote host before running tmux and then use the multiple tmux windows on the remote host? And yes, that's, uh, so usually what I do is, um, most places have like a gateway host or a bastion host or they're like my own development server. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll SSH to my server, the, the place where I put my tmux sessions. And then if I need to go to other places, I will just open up a new window in tmux and SSH to a further server. Um, this involves, of course, setting up SSH agents, um, setting up SSH agent forwarding, and um, there's annoying things about when you reattach to a TMUX session, you have to fix the SSH agent forwarding a little bit. Um, it's, 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 uh, a lot of people have this annoyance, and I've, like, I've got it as less annoying as I can, but it's still not, unfortunately, turnkey. But yeah, so I, 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 uh, for Grand Street, at least, I spent all my development time uh, on the server. Um, for my personal laptop, all my development time is is just my Tmux sessions are on my laptop here. Um, looks like I got a question from the audience. Um, do you ever change the info in the bottom right uh, since you don't care about it? Mm, I did? Yeah, no, I do not. Um, yeah, you change the from the date. Oh, right, yes. I, got, I get rid of the date. I just, yeah, basically I squeeze it all down there. I don't really need any of that down there. Um, I do keep the time there because it's a nice indication, uh, especially at work. Uh, it reminds me because the whole work servers are in this time zone and I live in central time zone. So it's nice to say, oh, hey, it's five o'clock. Chris is not in, in Pittsburgh. Chris is never gonna get that review. Uh, he's never gonna send that back to me. So any other questions, comments, concerns? Yes. It is, yes. So, uh, so the question is, is, is how can I get Tmux, uh, share Tmux sessions? Um, and um, Tmux now has a concept of a socket. And if you, uh, I believe it's, uh, I, don't, I don't know, unfortunately, what the command line, but it's, it's something you pass to Tmux itself. It must be capital S, yeah. Uh, so dash capital S will uh, um, be a socket file. And then what you do is you create a new socket file, give that other person permissions to that socket file, and then they can use that same socket file to connect to any Tmux sessions running in that socket file. Um, so that's uh, so basically all you need to do is, is, is kind of set permissions on that one file and then other people can connect. They don't have to actually be you. Uh, 
Okay, that's yeah, that's a good idea of uh, changing changing the tmux count for root to, to to be read or to say, hey, you are root, be careful. Yeah, no, that's that's. A, yeah, no, that's a, like yeah. Usually, usually for me, it's just the prompt. But yeah, if I if I don't notice the prompt, then yeah. All right. Anything else? Do we got? All right. Oh, what? Yes. Ah, this is just my vim. But I have, I have, yeah, I have something similar in that. Ah, well, I used to have something similar, but I made the slides and uh, um, the tmux conf is from these slides. Um, but um, you can actually get it to look like this, this power line thing, this really kind of fancy, uh, like this is using a custom font to get these special arrows down here and over here and. This little LN for line is a custom font thing. It's, it's uh, this. This is power line. There's airline. There's all sorts of other things, and uh, you can really get some fun, interesting uh, uh, stuff in your terminal that uh, was normally relegated to, uh, to GUI editors. But, all right. Thank you very much.